So like I said, I've, I've started to lay in some of the, the pale greens here on this hillside that I'm working on. Um, and that's starting to bring out some of the form a little bit. Just that little bit of color, just having those three variations. I have like sort of a dark blue here, a more dark blackish green, and then a pale green. And having those subtle variations in color on, on a hillside like that with different textures and all that is um, sort of creating the illusion of these little tufts of grass and these little hillocks and um, these bits of sagebrush and, and that kind of thing. So um, I'm just going to continue along that those lines with these colors. Um, And this is a kind of situation too where you can start to use things like uh, your fan brushes. Um, those are really good for, for different types of textures like that, the grasses and that kind of thing. They're really good for landscapes. Um, they give you some, some nice Bob Rossi type textures. Um, so. Oh, here, let me pull up the photo again, yeah. Um, I can find it. Hmm. Here we go. Um, I just sent the photo to you in the um, in the thing, so you should be able to open it on your computer.
Um, it's a relatively limited palette. Um, a little bit similar actually to my palette to the other one, um, with the exception of the, the warmer colors of the sky, um, which was not intentional, just kind of worked out that way. Um, so definitely lots of blues and greens. Um, and this is Idaho in springtime, so it's about the only time you see green like that. The rest of the time it's pretty brown or covered in snow in the winter. So speaking of, I'm gonna add a little bit of a bluish brown here into this mixture. Add a little more. That's just some of this color. Thank you. 
And so you can see too with this whole uh, triangular section of the painting here, um, it's gonna have to recede further back. Um, so I'm gonna keep a lot of my, my warmer color here, which is the greens up here towards the front. And this whole back triangular section, I'm gonna kind of tone with a little more like blues and blue grays. And that'll make it, that'll push it further back into the painting um, and make it seem further away than this section in the front. So. And there's still some greens in that section, but if you'll notice, especially to here, the mountains and the in the distance, um, those definitely have more of a bluish tinge to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do them in a blue. This one I might go back over and make it a little more purple because it's capturing some of that light from the sun and that's warming the color a little bit but for now i'm going to lay in some blue over it just so i can start to flesh out those forms a little I'm just paying attention to little details But you can see just how that that having that little strip of blue here on those mountains already kind of pushes them further back than this stuff that I have in the foreground. Um, gives it a little bit more of a sense of three dimensional space.
starting to bring some highlights in here to the grasses a little bit here on the hillside, just a little more of this pale green. All those warmer colors will kind of help offset that a little bit from the cooler colors in the background. So.
Starting to lay in a little bit of the color of the sky here, just to kind of complete things a little bit. There's a little bit of purple, sort of a lavender. Um, and I'll do this in very thin layers to allow some of that paper color to shine through. Kind of gives it a luminosity. And that way, too, when you're going over it with a really thin translucent layer, it's easier to paint in between things. You can actually kind of go over the branches a little bit, and it's a dark enough color that it's not really going to show through that much. I'm just starting to lay out the shape of some of the darker parts of these clouds here. Just with some ragged brush strokes because they're kind of wispy and translucent. They're not very heavy clouds. And then as it gets closer to the right side, they get a little bit darker. For right now, I'm just sort of mapping them out, sketching them out with the brush a little bit. And then I'll go in and add more of the uh, subtle variations in color and detail later. <clears throat>
And generally, I just um, sort of move back and forth between uh, the higher and darker and mid-range tones and kind of uh, building in layers. So I'll add some darks into an area and sometimes I'll go back in and add highlights within that and then kind of dial back the highlights where I need to with some more darks and just uh, kind of push and pull back and forth like that until I'm at a point that I'm satisfied.
Um, yeah, as far as the colors, um, well, I mean, I kind of mix as I go along as well, but I had a bunch of them mixed already. Um, so I, I had some of the mix from, from the last session, um, and I just had my color pa covered palette, so they were still wet. Um, some of them I've been, I've been working on other paintings too, um, and I use the same palette, so um, there were some colors in there that I had already mixed that I hadn't used last time that I kind of decided to incorporate into this, but um, at a certain point, you, you know, you become, I mean, I, I try to mix everything ahead of time and, and, and be relatively organized about it, but um, I mean, sometimes you, you decide suddenly on a, on a whim that you want a certain color, so then you have to, to go and mix it right before you use it. Um, so, uh, and like I said before, I, I tend to have a, a more intuitive approach to my color mixing in my own personal work, um, just because I have a lot of experience with color and I don't really need to, to overthink it too much. Um, so it just, uh, I go with my gut a lot when it comes to that, but, um, that's something you hone with over time. Um, so, I, I mean, I would say it's usually easiest to have most of your palette mixed ahead of time. You want to, you want a broad range of, of colors to work from, or a broad range of values, especially from light to dark. Um, it's just much, much easier to work that way um, rather than just, you know, working with two or three colors and, and, um, if you're if they're too close together in value, then they, then your painting ends up muddy. Um, so I think that um, sometimes students get sidetracked a little bit while they're painting, and they get so honed in on the actual like brush to paint surface thing that they forget to about the mixing part. And and really, from um, I, color mixing is is really want the most important part of painting as far as I'm concerned. Um, I mean the other stuff will come too but um, if you can't mix a good palette and, and work with it and have a, a, a good command of those colors then, then it doesn't matter how skilled you are with the brush or how able you are to draw then your paintings are just not going to turn out right. So you really need to master um, mixing color. <clears throat> So. Oh yes, I am. I think at another point where I'm, I'm probably gonna um, leave off for now um, and leave this video at about a about an hour long or so, um, like I did last week, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and post it to Zoom uh, or sorry, pardon me, uh, post it to Moodle like I uh, did last week, um, and I'll also check on that um, trying to post a. A different file format um, for you to, to pull up that um, that slide presentation of the, the images. Um, barring that, if you still are not able to get into it, just email me and I'll I'll just I'll just send you the photos that are in the um, that are in the the slideshow um, in an email. And it's just basically a handful of um, paintings and whatnot that are examples of, of landscape that are using some of these uh, techniques that I'm talking about. So um, I think that should be it for now. Um, thanks for stopping in again, Joe, and keeping me company. I'll see you Wednesday. Um, <laughs> I hope you're doing okay. Um, so anyway, um, and we're, we'll probably, I think next Monday is our last day of class officially. So um, I'll be in touch about maybe trying to do some format for um, for a critique. It's gonna be it's gonna have to be very informal, of course, because I mean, I, obviously, like we uh, we have uh, some students who can't make it, and people like you who are not able to use the speaker and all that. So it's um, we'll just see. <laughs> I have no idea how that's gonna go. Um, and I, I imagine it's not going to be all that many people, but we're just, I'm just kind of plugging along, trying to do, do what I can. Um, it's unfortunate that the semester had to end this way. I was really enjoying it. So um, anyway, hopefully I'll, I'll be seeing you around soon on campus. Um, once I'll, you know, once we're able to go back. Um, well, I'm graduating, but I'm hoping 
and I'm hoping to um, to be able to continue teaching at UNO. That's up in the air. I have no idea. Um, but if they'll give me a job, I'll continue to teach painting for sure. So, um, <clears throat> um, yeah, I'll keep in touch. Um, some of the other students are keeping in touch through email. Um, folks aren't being so great about the Zoom meetings, but that's to be expected. I mean, it's not, it's not a big deal. Um, anyway, I will, yeah, like I said, I'll keep in touch with you and I'll try and um, fix that file and see if I can um, get a different version of that for you so that you can see it. All right. I'm signing off. I will talk to you later.